Hi friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Katie and today we're going to talk all about my 2024 anticipated releases. So I just wanted to preface this video, I've had to preface a few of them now, that I am sick. So I apologize if I sound under the weather, it's because I am. I figured you guys wouldn't want to sit here and listen to me talk about 30 books. So instead I narrowed it down to 10 books that I am so excited to get my hands on, so excited to sit down and read. These are the top 10 that I'm really, really looking forward to in 2024. The first book is No One Can Know by Kate Alice Marshall. This book comes out on January 23rd. So this book, it says three sisters, two murders, and too many secrets to count. 14 years ago, the Palmer sisters, Emma, Juliet, and Daphne, left their home in Arden Hills and never returned. But when Emma discovers that she's pregnant and her husband loses his job, she has no option but to move back to the house that she and her estranged sisters still own and where their parents were murdered. Emma has never told anyone what she saw that night her parents died, even when she became the prime suspect. But as her presence in the house threatens to uncover secrets that have stayed hidden for years, the sisters are drawn together once again, and Emma begins to wonder just what her siblings will do to keep the past buried and whether she did the right thing staying quiet about what was whispered that night. No one can know. The first question I have is, why would you keep a house where your parents were murdered? That seems sus. I just truly think Kate Alice Marshall has a great way of telling a thriller. Granted, I've read one. I've read one book, but I'm a fan. So I absolutely can't wait to pick this book up. And most of you have probably already gotten this book because it was a book of the month pick. The next book is Crescent City 3, which comes out on January 30th. This should be no surprise. I feel like so many of us are prepared for this book. Well, probably not emotionally prepared, but we are ready to have it in our hands and we are ready to be hurt again. What I will say is I think Crescent City has a good group of characters, characters that you will grow to care about. And I think the story is developing and we will see where it takes us in book three. Then we have Ashes of You by Katherine Cowles. This comes out February 8th. This is going to be the last and final book in the Lost and Found series. The Lost and Found series is a romantic suspense series where we're following the Hartley family. I am obsessed. We are going to be getting Lawson's book. I think it's going to be a single dad nanny romance, which as you guys know, I'm obsessed with right now. I am in my single dad nanny era and I'm not complaining. I'm a fan. I am 1000% a fan and I love Lawson. Getting to know him through the other books, I've just really grown so attached to him and he deserves his happily ever after and I cannot wait to see it. Then we have A Witch's Guide to Magical Innkeeping and this comes out on April 2nd. And let me tell you guys right now, I have a bajillion books that I'm looking forward to in April. April, I will be busy. April, I will have no time for anything else other than these books because April 2024 is a good freaking month. But this book um, is also written by the same author who wrote The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches, which I loved so much. This book, it says, it is an enchanting novel about a witch who has a second chance to get her magical powers and her life back on track. Sarah Swan was once one of the most powerful witches in Britain. Then she resurrected her great aunt Jasmine from the very recently dead, lost most of her magic, befriended a semi-villainous talking fox, and was exiled from her magical guild. Now she, slightly reluctantly and a bit grumpily, helps Aunt Jasmine run an inn, where she deals with quirky guest shenanigans, tries to keep the talking fox in check, and longs for the magical future she lost. One, the cover is beautiful, and two, I just, I expect the story will be absolutely magical and captivating, so I cannot wait to have this book. The next book we have also comes out on April 2nd, and that is Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. I'm very simple. If Abby writes it, I'm going to read it. That's just how it works. That's just the rule. And I also was very fortunate that I was able to meet her in 2023. I went to her book launch for Yours Truly. She's such a sweet person. She ended up staying super late at that event because there were so many people and she was really kind to literally every person there. She has made a fan out of me. I adore her. I cannot wait to hopefully see her again for this book. But let's get into what it's about. Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez is a good fit for those seeking a heartwarming and lighthearted romance that explores the themes of love, fate, and the complexities of family dynamics. Because another important thing to mention, for those of you that have never read an Abby book, some things you can definitely look forward to is I feel like Abby is the queen of good dialogue. When her characters are talking to each other, you believe it. You feel like you were right there with them. They just banter so well together. I, I've never read anything like it, if that makes sense. And the humor comes across so effortless. Justin has a curse, and thanks to a Reddit thread, it's now all over the internet. 
Every woman he dates goes on to find their soulmate the second they break up. Ooh, it's giving me like good luck Chuck vibes. Have you guys seen that movie? When a woman slides into his DMs with the same problem, they come up with a, they'll date each other and break up. Their curses will cancel each other out and they'll both go on to find the love of their lives. It's a bonkers idea and it just might work. Emma hadn't planned that, that her next assignment as a traveling nurse would be in Minnesota, which by the way, little fun fact, all of her books take place in Minnesota, but she and her best friend agree that dating Justin is too good of an opportunity to pass up, especially when they get to rent an adorable cottage on a private island on Lake Minnetonka. It's supposed to be a quick fling just for the summer, but when Emma's toxic mother shows up and Justin has to assume guardianship of his three siblings, they're suddenly navigating a lot more than they expected, including catching real feelings for each other. Then we have the reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson, which also comes out on April 2nd. And again, very similar to Abby, I'm a Holly Jackson stan. She is an auto buy author for me. Um, she's written the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series, Five Survive. And I just am in love with her writing. I love her books. They are always such a good time for me. I always enjoy myself. I don't know too much about this book, but I do know that I trust Holly. So let's get into the synopsis. So it says this is a new true crime fueled mystery thriller about a girl determined to uncover the shocking truth about her missing mother while filming a documentary on the unsolved case. Lights, camera, lies. I wonder if the audiobook will be very similar to A Good Girl's Guide to Murder where if there'll be like a podcast element and it'll have like a full cast because if so I'm gonna have to reread this and do the audio 1000%. For those of you that don't know A Good Girl's Guide to Murder is one of my favorite series on audio. I recommend it to literally every human I know. When I see somebody reading A Good Girl's Guide to Murder I recommend like hey if you haven't please consider switching to audio. Please think about it because it's just so well done in my opinion. 18 year old Belle has lived her whole life in the shadow of her mom's mysterious disappearance. 16 years ago, Rachel Price vanished and young Belle was the only witness, but she has no memory of it. Rachel is gone, long presumed dead, and Belle wishes everyone would just move on. But the case is dragged up from the past when the Price family agreed to a true crime documentary. Belle can't wait for filming to end, for life to go back to normal. And then the impossible happens. Rachel Price reappears and life will never be normal again. Rachel has an unbelievable story about what happened to her. Unbelievable because Belle isn't sure it's real. If Rachel is lying, then where has she been all this time? And could she have been dangerous? With all the cameras still rolling, Belle must uncover the truth about her mother and find out why Rachel Price really came back from the dead. Okay, yes. Then we have The Rule Book by Sarah Adams, which also comes out on April 2nd. And... What I do know about this is I believe it is a continuation of the cheat sheet in some capacity. So what I will say about Sarah Adams is I wasn't the biggest fan of When in Rome, but I loved Practice Makes Perfect. And then I listened to the cheat sheet this year and I also really, really enjoyed that. So when I heard that this was like a continuation, I knew I was interested. I definitely want to give this book a shot. So it says college exes break all the rules when they reunite years later in this enemies to lovers second chance romance, the highly anticipated companion novel to the TikTok sensation, The Cheat Sheet. Nora McKenzie's entire career lies in the hands of famous NFL tight end Derek Pender, who also happens to be her extremely hot college ex-boyfriend. Nora didn't end things as gracefully as she could have back then, and now it's come back to haunt her. Derek is her first client as an official full-time sports agent, and he's holding a grudge. Derek has set his sights on a little friendly revenge. If Nora McKenzie, the first girl to ever break his heart, wants to be his agent, oh, he'll let her be his agent. The plan is simple. Make Nora's life absolutely miserable. But if Derek knows anything about the woman he once loved, she won't quit easily. Instead of giving in, Nora starts a scheme of her own. But then a wild night in Vegas leads to Nora and Derek in bed the next morning, married. With the rule book out the window, could this new relationship be the thing to save their careers or the thing to spark the romance of a lifetime? And then on April 9th, we have Wild Love by Elsie Silver. I'm so excited, you guys. Most of you know that I love the Chestnut Spring series. Heartless is my absolute favorite. Daddy Cade, there is unlike nothing else. But I was so sad for the series to end. So thankfully, Wild Love is going to be a spinoff series that follows, I believe, it's Willa's brother. And so Willa is the main love interest in Heartless. I believe we are following her brother, Ford, in Wild Love. So it's a spinoff. It'll be set in the same world. So we're not really saying goodbye, thank goodness, because I was not ready. So it says, Rosie Belmont has been driving me wild for years. The good kind of wild. 
the bad kind of wild, but mostly the kind of wild that comes with wanting your best friend's little sister and knowing you can't have her. After living in the city, she comes blasting back into Rose Hill like a storm, beautiful, messy, and chaotic. And one wide-eyed, desperate plea for a job is all it takes for me to hire her. Forbes may have labeled me the world's hottest billionaire, but all I care about is opening my new recording studio, something that comes to a screeching halt when I end up face-to-face -face with a young girl who claims I'm her biological father. Now I spend my days balancing with parenting a sullen 12-year-old, all while trying desperately to keep my hands the hell off my best friend's little sister. I vow to keep Rosie at arm's length. I try to stick to scowls and grumpy one-liners, but with her, verbal sparring is merely foreplay, friction that turns into a blistering heat. I know damn well I shouldn't cross that line, but shouldn't and can't are two very different things, and the only thing I truly can't do is resist her. When it comes to romance, I trust Elsie Silver with my life. Then we have Funny Story by Emily Henry, which comes out April 23rd. So this one, it says, Daphne always loved the way her fiance Peter told their story. How they met on a blustery day, fell in love over an errant hat, and moved back to his lakeside hometown to begin their life together. He was really good at telling it, right up until the moment he realized he was actually in love with his childhood best friend, Petra. Which is how Daphne begins her new story. Stranded in beautiful Michigan, without her friends or family, but with a dream job as a children's librarian that barely pays the bills, and proposing to be roommates with the only person who could possibly understand her predicament, Petra's ex, Miles. Scruffy and chaotic, Miles is exactly the opposite of practical, buttoned-up Daphne, whose co-workers know so little about her they have a running bet that she's either FBI or in witness protection. The roommates mainly avoid one another until one day, while drowning their sorrows, they form a tenuous friendship and a plan. If said plan also involves posting deliberately misleading photos of their summer adventures together, well, who could blame them? But it's all for show, of course, because there's no way Daphne could actually start her new chapter by falling in love with her ex-fiance's new fiance, right? I definitely think the premise sounds really interesting and I'm curious to see how Emily Henry kind of like takes her spin at this. Then we have Middle of the Night by Riley Sager, which comes out on June 18th. I wasn't sure if I was gonna continue reading Riley Sager's books. I've read all of them except for Survive the Night and they're very okay to me, if that makes sense. They're usually like three stars. I think Home Before Dark is my only four star by him. The synopsis of this one reeled me in. I'm intrigued. I need to know. So I definitely think I'm going to pick this one up. It says, the worst thing to ever happen on Hemlock Circle occurred in Ethan Marsh's backyard. One July night, 10 year old Ethan and his best friend and neighbor Billy fell asleep in a tent set up in a manicured lawn in a quiet, quaint New Jersey cul-de-sac. In the morning, Ethan woke up alone. During the night, someone had sliced the tent open with a knife and taken Billy, and he was never seen again. 30 years later, Ethan has reluctantly returned to his childhood home. Plagued by bad dreams and insomnia, he begins to notice strange things happening in the middle of the night. Someone seems to be roaming the cul-de-sac at odd hours, and signs of Billy's presence keep appearing in Ethan's backyard. Is someone playing a cruel prank, or has Billy, long thought to be dead, somehow returned to Hemlock Circle? The mysterious occurrences prompt Ethan to investigate what really happened that night, a quest that reunites him with former friends and neighbors and leads him into the woods that surrounds Hemlock Circle. Woods where Billy claimed monsters roam and where a mysterious institute does clandestine research on a crumbling estate. The closer Ethan gets to the truth, the more he realizes that no place, be it quiet forest or suburban street, is completely safe and that the past has a way of haunting the present. Let's be honest, I need to know which way Riley's going to go because we all know what I'm talking about. Riley kind of goes two different ways with his books. And now I also want to know more about this institute. Are, how are they correlated? Because they're going to be correlated. Those are the 10 books that I'm really, really looking forward to getting to in 2024. If you have stuck around this long, leave a star emoji in the comments below and let me know what book you are most looking forward to picking up in 2024. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!